Okay, hi, I'm Bob Rosani with the FSHD Patient Advocacy, FSHD Lab Rat on uh, YouTube, and FSHD Patient Advocacy on uh, Facebook. I um, have the distinct pleasure of being here at Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus, Ohio, with uh, Scott Harper's group, and you're part of the, let me get that, the uh, Gene Therapy. Center for Gene Therapy. So, so, and they're focusing pretty much on FSHD and potentially other related uh, diseases, right, where this could benefit. So Scott, if you kind of just introduce your team, we're going to take a tour of the lab, which is a real special treat to see where these wizards are doing the actual magic. So uh, anyway, I, my privilege, I'm turning it over to Scott here. To okay. I'm Scott Harper. I'm the principal investigator in the Harper Lab uh, here at Nationwide Children's Hospital. Um, I have uh, also an appointment, a faculty appointment at Ohio State University in the Department of Pediatrics. And uh, I'm a molecular biologist by training, and, and my lab has been focused on developing gene therapies for neuromuscular disease. And more recently, I guess in the last 10 years or so, we've been focused on FSH. Uh, so our goal is to develop new therapies and treatments for FSHD and then try to translate those to the clinic. So the team here, uh, you want me to introduce them? Oh, please, this is a team effort. Or should they introduce themselves? Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm Mustafa Alkersan. I'm a medical school graduate from Iraq. I, uh, I joined, I've been with Harvard Lab for the last uh, two years, and we're working on different projects focusing uh, on uh, FSHD disease. And my projects involve uh, now having a mouse model uh, like expressing that's for very low levels to see screening for the toxicity of that for the COVID gene for the uh, FSHD disease. My name is Hossein, I am an MD graduate from Turkey. Uh, here I started through the in vivo uh, procedures and uh, applying the potential treatments to the mouse models. So I, uh, after that I continued my project uh, concentrated on the detection of the uh, dark spore expression. So uh, I'm continuing to set up that to use it in the tissue and animal uh, models. Hi, my name is Nizar Saad. I'm a postdoctoral scientist in the Harper Lab, and I've been working for three years on uh, gene modifiers in FSHD and developing microRNA-based gene therapies uh, for the disease. My name is Afruz, Afruz Rashidanejad, and I'm a postdoc in Scott Harper Lab, and I'm working on a different project like a exoneskipping and CRISPR project for knocking down docs for expression in vivo and in vitro. I'm Lindsay Wallace, I'm a research scientist. I've been in the Harper Lab for 11 years, and most of my um, projects are focused on ducts for targeted therapies. Okay, uh, so hopefully that's still going. We're going to walk into the inner chambers here of where all the wizardry is going to be taking place. Okay, we're here, uh, what do you want to call this section of the lab? We're looking at cell cultures, right. which is going tissue to be very room. Tissue culture room. Okay, and Christina is working here. Come on in here. Hi. Hi. So right now I am just looking at cells for their confluency on my plate um, to see if I need to split them to keep them happy. Um, if you'd like, you can take a look. Oh, I love it. What uh, what power are we looking at? Um, the highest power, which I am not sure. Of the top of my head. Wow, I don't know if you can put the camera up here. I've done it in labs before, so I would Let's try it. You keep that running. We don't need to take it out of it. Let's see. Now, are these mouse cells? So these are kidney cells, human kidney cells. They're called hepatitis. We're moving around here, guys. You're gonna say, oh, "What is this? Looks like the eclipse of the moon. <laughs> it's the blood moon. There it is." Yeah. So this is actually a more sparse plate. So I could probably get you a one that's nearly confluent, um, which just means there's a ton of cells on there. Yeah. This is gonna be too shot. hard. Yeah. All right. Well. Get one more shot. Do you want shot me to snag you another plate? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. So what are you doing here? You're looking for the expression of ducts for? No, so right now I'm just um, maintaining these. So they're just normal, healthy HEC293 cells. 
and I'm trying to grow them up to a certain point because you need a certain number of cells mm -hmm. in order to um, transfect plasmid into them. So if it's too sparse, you're not going to have enough um, expression when you transfect okay. it. Okay, and what will these lead to then? This point? Um, so these are for a project called the PTM project, and it's a protein modifying project um, that Jocelyn, a previous member in our lab, was working and I'm just getting more data points for yes. her project. So we, we use these cells as a factory. We, we put in some DNA that um, codes for the ducts 4 protein. Mm -hmm. And so we, we can put that, that DNA into these cells and we use the cells as a factory to produce protein. Uh, and then we can do different experiments to test um, you know, what the effects of certain modifications on that protein, uh, in, in, in this case we're producing DUX4, uh, which is the, the protein that's linked to FSHD, and we're, we're asking what chemical changes on the outside of the DUX4 protein might affect its function. Um, so Christina's got, uh, geez, like three dozen different DNA constructs that produce different types of DUX4, so we can ask questions about the function of the protein. And so these these cells, um, we grow them in this incubator, and it's just it's just a little humidified chamber. Each one of these plates has cells on it, different types. Um, we also use those cells to make virus, and actually that's what Allison standing right to your left there. That's what she's working on. And these are retroviruses. Uh, we're using adeno-associated viruses. Oh, AAVs. AAVs. Right. Okay. Maybe you're on. I, you're on the spot. So I'm Allison. I produce most of the viruses that our lab uses, and like uh, Scott previously said, we use these cells as little factories to grow the virus. We give the cells different pieces of DNA, which are the instruction manuals to make the proteins that go on the outside of the virus, and then the DNA, which is the inside that's going to get delivered. Mm. And so once we've uh, transfected these cells, we've um, given them this DNA, they take those instructions and they produce the virus for us. After that happens, we have to purify the virus out of our cells. So we have to physically break these cells open and get our virus out, and we want it as pure as possible because we don't want to inject um, mice with anything that's not just virus. One of those purification steps is actually uh, right behind you. It's called FPLC. It is this little machine over here. Wow. With a lot of wires and tubing. <laughs> <laughs> and that stands for Fast Protein Liquid Chromatography. Essentially, um, you know, we all learn as kids, you know, opposites attract. You're positive and negative um, interact and they want to attach to each other. So we can determine the different types of AAV, like serotype 6, is that a positive or negative, you know, charge on the outside. That's polarity, basically? Mm -hmm. And wow. so we can pick a different column, wow. and we choose a column that has the opposite charge on it. So when we put the liquid with our virus and other contaminants through, we hope that only our virus is going to stick to that column. And then we can clean that, we can flush that through with the virus still on that column. And when we want to get it off, we think we've completely cleaned it. We use the same charge to eventually overpower the virus and be more um, attracted to our column, which pushes the virus off. And we collect it into little tubes and multiple pieces so we can look at the individual pieces later and say, oh, this has the most virus and this is the cleanest virus and just combine those um, for our final product. So that improves the our therapies. So this is to improve the efficiency of the targeting. Just to, high, to give us a highly pure um, preparation of virus, and so then, then we know that any effects that are uh, arising from injecting those into mice uh, are purely based on that virus and not due to some other th other contaminant. Um, Maybe, Net, so Nettie is the last last person here that can Hi. But we, I think we should probably start heading over to the uh, So, Nettie, what do you do real quick? So, really quick, I basically work uh, on modifying our current therapies at a genetic level to try and optimize them and improve their function. 
um, mm. essentially so we can hopefully lower the potential dose or I can also work on modifications to try and reduce any negative off-target effects, things like that. Um, I use 293 cells also. Um, I use them mostly for something we call luciferase assay, which is a really fun little assay where we essentially take the DOX4 gene and we connect its expression to expression of a luciferase, which is an enzyme that emits light, which is a measurable signal that we can detect very easily. And so when I want to test a therapy, I will combine that sort of measurable light-connected DOX4. When I combine it with our therapy, we can see reduction in the signal of the light as the ducts four levels go down. So it makes it a very fast, easy readout for how well our therapy works. Luminous. That's right. wonderful. Very good. Wow, and is that the kind of process that actually fireflies do when they illuminate? Or no, that's totally different. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's gene that actually was from derived, uh, yeah. derived from the um, yeah. Awesome. Firefly. All right, Nettie, awesome. Lots of different species have them. There's a firefly one, there's a sea pansy one, there, I mean, lots of different organisms have that. And we did use, we did you ever see on that firefly thing when they all flash at the same time, like yeah. murmuration? And it's what's amazing. that all about? Yeah. It is amazing. Yeah, it's a form of communication, I guess. Pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah. You all take care.